Hey guys, Kev here, and I'm going to do the Finch's Nest for you. So, um, this is going to be a video overviewing all of the current Finch Knife Co. Uh, knives that are available or were available. You can check the website, I'll link it below. Check the description. Uh, Spencer from Finch is an absolutely fantastic dude. Uh, he has sent me some knives uh, to review and keep, obviously. Um, I've also bought some of these knives, so these aren't all just given to me by Finch. Um, and I, I would hope that you guys know me well enough by now that I'm not going to just give something a good review um, just because somebody sent it to me. That's not my M.O., um, if you send me something, you are risking me talking shit on it. Um, but I always applaud Finch and Spencer for having the balls to do that. They send knives to a lot of YouTubers uh, without the expectation of a positive review. I've never been asked by them, like, hey, please, like, if you don't like it, let us know. Like, no, they just want you to use it, carry it, and give your thoughts on it. Um, and I really appreciate that. And I think part of it is they know they have quality products. They know they have quality designs. It might not be for everyone, and some of these aren't for me, and I'll go over that, but um, they know they, they have a good product in general. Um, and that's why they're willing to do what they do. And I appreciate that. And they're smart. Uh, it's one of my favorite companies in terms of how they spend their marketing budget. Um, so I've used them as an example in the past, but if you look at companies like the James brand, um, where they put all their money into ad marketing and, and um, you know, like commercials, but like, you know, photography marketing and, and Instagram ads and all that kind of stuff, right? And I'm, I'm not really into their stuff, so uh, I don't see a lot of it because I don't follow them, but I know kind of how they go about stuff. Um, and that's not my favorite type of uh marketing for a company and finch on the other hand their strategy is let's take our mar and i'm guessing i haven't talked to spencer about this so again grain of salt here um but it seems like what they do is they take a marketing budget every company has a marketing budget and they set aside a portion of it and they actually buy extra knives right so like let's say they're gonna make they're gonna have a thousand of this knife made right and sell it they're gonna make a 1100 right so they'll get an extra hundred of them that is out of their marketing budget and that way they have a hundred knives they can send out to whomever uh youtubers they can send it out to uh instagram reviewers they can send it out to whoever somebody who just uses and abuses knives and gives feedback um doesn't have to be somebody on a platform right uh, they may just use it to get feedback on the blade steel how the heat treat is that kind of stuff and i think that's the kind of stuff finch does and i think they have a marketing budget that they spend on extra knives to send out um, and that is the way you want to uh, run your marketing for a knife company, in my opinion, because the community is so strong, because we are so um, communicative and, and together, and uh, we watch YouTube reviews when we want a knife to see what uh, people like and don't like about it. Like, you'll watch, at least I would expect, or I would suggest, if you're out there looking for knives and you have a specific knife in mind that you go watch um, multiple reviews of it. Go check out Nick Shabazz's video. Go check out my disassembly and first impressions where you can see the internals on most knives and um, hear my thoughts on it or whatever. Go check out Jake from Beard of Gears review, Kyle from DTOM Knives and Gear. Go check out you know, NAF Sergeant, and, and the list goes on. Stas23, I could name a million channels. Uh, I'm not trying to just throw names out there. If I didn't say your name, it's just because I'm not, I didn't come up with it off the top of my head. Um, but, like, that's what I do. I want everybody's opinion, and then I kind of form my own thought on it. Um, just because I don't like a knife doesn't mean that you shouldn't. Um, just because 
Nick Shabazz likes a knife doesn't mean it should go for three hundred dollars more on the secondary. Uh, it's a whole other uh, thing. But anyway, uh, I just I, I think because of the way the community is um, and the way we're all connected on Instagram and YouTube and Facebook, uh, sending out knives to those people that are you know that other people follow and 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 respect their opinions is a good way to go about spending your marketing budget instead of just making fancy videos about it uh, or trying to pay people to say it's good or whatever um so anyway that is my beginning rant there this is the lime lacroix it's okay i prefer other flavors but it's what i got so the Finch's Nest, guys, I wanted to go over this because uh, we're getting into summer and Finch is going to start dropping knives. Uh, maybe they already have and I missed it, uh, but they're going to start dropping knives. They have a bunch of models lined up and I can't wait to check them out. Um, but I wanted to go over the first five knives that they came out with and just talk about them, run through them. Give my thoughts overall on Finch, which I kind of just did. I love them. And uh, kind of go from there. So to start out with, uh, they used Best Tech for the first two production runs or models. Uh, the first one here is the Runtley. Uh, this is in G10 and uh, 154 CM Steel. Let me see if I can show you. There you go. Runtley 154 CM. Now, the first... The first run of these came out in N690 Co. Steel. Um, it's a bowler steel. Also a pretty good steel. I wouldn't say it's as good as 154 CM. Uh, it's more like a VG10 and uh, N690 is. This is a little bit better than that. Um, but that's what the first one uh, had. The first run. This is the first knife they ever released. I think it came in this black. It came in like a yellow. I think they called it the yellow belly. Um, and maybe a blue. I could be crazy, but it was something or a red. I don't know. It was something like that. And they've done uh, other runs in different colors and different scales, wood scales. They do all types of stuff. I love that as well about Finch. Um, but you'll see the build quality from Best Tech is solid. You have dead centered, dead centering. Um, you have a good pivot design with a D-shaped pivot, a 3D milled clip. Um, and unlike a lot of Best Techs, I've never had a Finch Best Tech pivot walk on me. It does tend to happen with Best Tech made knives, but that just is solved with some Loctite. Not a big deal. Um, you have very tiny bearings in these knives. If I recall correctly, they all have these very small bearings. They're not like five millimeter one sixteenth bearings that I usually think of as small bearings. These are even smaller. Um, I've never seen them made by like Skiff or Gillian's to replace. Um, so I've never swapped bearings on any of these knives, but I just want to point that out. Uh, it has a very nice kind of Warren Cliff cleaver type blade modified thing. Um, basically you get a straight edge. It's a little, uh, utility knife guys. It's very small. Uh, it does have this nail nick, which if you're, uh, dexterous, is that a word enough? You can spidey flick it with that, which is cool. You can see here, it's basically a three finger knife for me. The fourth finger kind of hangs off. It does have a finch type finger choil. Like they always make the flipper, sorry, flipper choil. They always make the flipper like long enough and angled enough that you can get on there and use it as a choil. And a lot of people give me flack for that. Um, I'm not saying I recommend you do it because some people are going to say you could get yourself cut. But I think it works fantastically. Um, so that is what I do with these knives. Um, you can see how much more control I have. I have all four fingers on right now and I still feel safe. I mean... Don't really know the difference between this and a, cho a finger choil, but uh, or even a flat kind of you know design. Um, so I think it's good, but uh, very good cutter, very fantastic grind on here. Best Tech did a great job, um, and yeah, it's just a really good little secondary or fifth pocket um, box cutter is really what it is. It's not uh, really for me. Um, I think 
uh spencer actually gave me this knife uh he sent me a giveaway knife for my 500 sub giveaway i think and he knew this was the only finch i needed to complete the nest and he sent it along for me so uh that goes to show you right there how awesome the dude is uh he wasn't just sending it to me to review or whatever um you know the knife had been out a long time at that point he really just wanted to uh, help me complete the nest. And I thought that was really kind of him. Uh, but yeah, it's just a little bit small for me overall. And I'll open these all up as I go and you'll see the sizes. Um, but it's just one of the smaller ones. And uh, that's the reasoning behind me not really carrying it or using it. It's just a little fat and small. Um, so that is the Runtley. But depending on your hand size and everything, I think it's a very good option. And an absolutely fantastic first offering from Finch. Next, they came out with the Tycoon here, which uh, they all come with this uh, blacked out blade and hardware, and then they have different um, handle scales. So you have uh, G10 in green, comes in orange, black, blue, I think, as well. And then the backspacer is uh, the same there. Um, these are all flipper only knives, which is interesting. You did have that nail nick technically on the Runtley, um, but it seems like Finch, um, they prefer flipper tabs. So we'll see what happens in the future, but, um, they're all, um, flipper only designs at this point. Uh, you have this flipper tab right here. Um, again, this one's made by Best Tech. I was told by Spencer that this kind of ridge, kind of design right here was added at the very last minute like just to add a little texture and i think that was an absolutely fantastic decision um that they made you have a milled clip here a good solid clip and then the flipper and then you have what i have uh deemed the mini machete because <laughs> it looks like a mini machete it's just really cool crazy ass blade i don't know what this is it uh, uh i guess it's a clip point or a trailing point it's not really a drop point because it goes up right um a machete style blade i guess um again very well done by best tech good edge um solid cutter um good action it's not like drop shut um but it's smooth and the flipper works very well. I will say the detent on the Takuna is a little bit stronger than uh, some of the other offerings from Finch. Uh, so if you like a stronger detent, the Takuna is probably the one to go for. Um, but I do uh, really like this knife ergonomically. It fits in my hand just, I just get all four on there. But again, flipper choil so I can choke up to here. Boom. I have very good control. I have all four fingers on. It just feels really good like this. Um, and you have good use of that blade. Um, I will say that this is probably not my favorite of the group. Um, probably behind the Runtley, it's my least favorite. Um, but again, they're very good knives. It's just I'm kind of picking out of the ones I have. I haven't pointed out they all have these looms. I think they all do. Um, yeah, I think they all do. So you can kind of uh, blast them with, I think you have to use a flashlight and then turn the lights off and they'll glow. Or maybe they glow in general. I'm not sure. I haven't really looked. They sit in a knife case at night, so you don't see them. Um, but Finch Knife Company, I believe, is owned by or also owned by a knife or sorry, a watchmaking company. So that's why they kind of added that touch to kind of show that, which I think is pretty cool. So that is the Mini Machete. So those are the two best tech OEM ones. You can see the size difference right there. And this is not even a big knife. So just for reference, uh, I'm going to take out my Malibu, which is like bug out sized, I'd say. Um, and you can see it's a bit bigger than the Mini Machete and it's a lot bigger than the uh, Runtley there. I don't have my bug out here, so I can't show you, but uh, it's this 3.3 3 inches on the blade, I think. So basically bug out size. All right, next up they came out with, uh, no, what am I doing? Sorry, I moved this over. Next they came out with the 1929. 
Um, and the other cool thing about Finch, another great thing about Finch is they all have some kind of backstory. Um, like the Rutley is based on a fishing lure of some sort, I believe. Um, and you can go on their website and read the full story to each one. Uh, the Tycuna, I believe, is based on an Amazonian tribe. 1929, obviously based on the year there, 1929. Um, so really, really cool. This is one of my favorite one, uh, favorite finches. This might be my favorite, actually. Hey, I think it is. This is my favorite finch. Um, it has this cool clip point blade. It's kind of small, but stout. Um, has this black micard. I really like that. There's so many variants of these guys. It's insane. Um, it is the first one made by QSP and guys the difference is just the designs are different so there's that but like just in the build uh, I just much prefer the QSP models if I'm being honest and um, that's kind of in general I prefer QSP over best tech uh, again being honest because they nail detents every time they're usually uh, very similar uh, from knife to knife you don't get a lot of variants um, nice and snappy. And then my favorite part is, uh, well, there's two things. First is the lock bar disengagement is so smooth and effortless. Like there's no, uh, lock stick. It's almost like it's not touching the blade and you're just kind of moving it over, but it is, and it's locked up solid. Uh, there's no lock rock. There's nothing, but it just, boom, it's just, oh my God. Uh, if you have any type of uh, dexterity issues or anything with your fingers, I would definitely look into um, a QSP because they just nail that lock bar release on all their knives. Very snappy uh, on the detent, not too strong, not light in any way, uh, just nailed. And then uh, the other thing I absolutely love about QSP is their hand satin. This is hand rubbed, guys, uh, and it looks absolutely just stunning. I mean, for a hundred and twenty dollar knife, it's one fifty four cm. So yeah, you can kind of give them a little ding there on the steel, but this hand finish is fantastic. Um, and a lot of people will tell you one fifty four cm is a very very good steel. Uh, it's just not up there with like the super steels of today. Um, but I think for this knife, this build, this price, this design, all that goes into it, I think. It's perfectly fine. I, you're not going to see me complaining about the steel on this knife. Um, I just, I mean, just look at it. It's just got some very unique design aspects. And it is stainless steel, uh, so it's not titanium, but it's not heavy. It does have a titanium milled clip. Um, and it just kind of glides shut, snaps open, and again, so smooth on disengagement. Absolutely love the 1929. Then they came out with the Holiday. And this knife is based off of Doc Holiday, the famous Western gunslinger. And uh, I think he was a dentist too, actually. And maybe that's where the Warren Cliff comes in. I'm not sure. But apparently this is the blade shape he would have used. Again, check their website. And this is the Snakewood inlaid version and again, you have a very similar build to the 1929. You have that stainless steel uh, scales with an inlay. Uh, you have the hand rub finish on the blade and you have that fantastic lock bar uh, for easy disengagement. So um, yeah, Holiday has the Warren Cliff. It's a lighter blade than the 1929, even though it's longer. And it just feels, I don't know, it's just really good. It's also snappy. Detent's a little lighter on this, and I think that might be because of the blade being thinner and lighter and all that. Uh, but again, it's not too light in any way. It flies out. It's just really good. Uh, the way it closes for a blade that light is very impressive. Dead centered, as all have been. Um, yeah, it's a little bit longer. So this is the longest knife to date that they made at this point. Now, you're going to see that one in a second, but... Um, comparing it to these, you'll see there, you get a little bit more length on this guy and that's going to fit a lot more people. Uh, the holiday is probably the best option for most hand sizes. If you're looking out there to pick one, um, that's probably going to fit the most people. 
um, and it's an absolutely fantastic knife uh, with that Warren Cliff blade. It's going to be fantastic for cardboard, opening packages, cutting through fruit and such because it has enough reach for that as well. Ergos are good. Uh, just a simple design, but yet fantastic. I love it. Uh, that's my second favorite. So one, two right there. Uh, then comes the Cimarron. So this is the last in the line um, until, you know, now when they're coming out with new stuff. This is a more budget uh aimed variant this is 14 c 28 n it's a cimarron i should have said budget aim model not variant this is the only variant it just comes in different color handles um it has this very short and thin blade it's like a drop point uh, a very extended one really reminds me of like a fillet knife like a fishing knife and that is what i would recommend like if you're looking for a good knife and you, and you fish, I think this is a solid choice. Um, it has these G10 scales. It's kind of layered there with that blue and green kind of uh, Seahawk style. Titanium milled clip. Uh, 14C28N is fantastic steel. Um, I really don't even, I don't think it's worse than 154CM. I mean, in my opinion, it's one of the better uh non kind of like powdered steels is it a powdered steel i don't know but I, I really like it uh, i'm not a steel expert guy so um i think i just noticed the scratch on that finish but uh it doesn't matter action on this fantastic i mean this has better action than all of them um it just drops and then it is very very light shakage to get it down uh flipper tab is fantastic just like all the rest has same flipper choil type deal again these all have it i mean it's just so nice to choke up on that flipper and again for these smaller ones oh it's just so good um and i know people are gonna give me shit but what are you gonna do um so yeah that is the cimarron another very good offering again this one's a liner lock so this is gonna be the first nope it's going to be... All right, so the first two were liner locks. Second two were frame locks. I guess you could call it a bolster lock on this because technically it's not a full frame lock, but I think there's enough of it showing. Eh, if I'm being correct, it's going to be a bolster lock on these. And then, again, a liner lock on this. I think this would be considered nested liner lock on this. Um, anyway, so just fantastic um uh, same exact thing with qsp though there's just no <laughs> lock stick there's no like resistance it's just so good on that um get past the detent and it drops um this is one of the better feeling and built ones um it's just the design that doesn't like scream to me you know um but i really like it so this is probably my third favorite so the order basically goes one two three four five and that's just because of size if this was bigger and a little thinner um i know a lot of people have asked for like an xl runtley and maybe that'll be coming but um yeah guys that's a look at the finch's nest currently um and i will continue to try to build this nest as we go uh, but I wanted to kind of uh, do this video before all these new models start dropping. Uh, so anyone who hasn't uh, heard of Finch or seen any Finches out there can kind of uh, get an overview of them and what they're about and um, how they're kind of looked at in the community. I think um, they're one of the best companies, best um, um, kind of role models out there for people to look at in terms of if you're starting a new knife company um or getting into it or whatever um and i think they're a great place to start for people who want to spend around 100 bucks on a knife and get a solid design build uh and support a good company and all that again these are made by best tech qsp uh they are made in china uh but they are very well built um and you're supporting an American company and American families um, because the company Finch is set here in America and Kansas. Uh, again, I, I really recommend checking out their website. It's one that is actually interesting to go to and read the stories behind each knife. Oh, I never mentioned 
This knife story is, it's kind of modeled after wind turbines. So you know the turbines in the Midwest and uh, lots of parts of uh, Northern Europe, at least that I'm aware of, uh, they have those big, huge wind turbines with the kind of like, is it three or five kind of blades on them that spin around with the wind and gather energy. Um, and that's kind of what this is modeled after. Um, again, story is on their website, check it out. Um, but just really cool that they have stories behind each knife. Uh, they are going to be coming out with one of their models that's coming out is going to have a reversible clip. So it will have a left hand carry clip. These are all flipper only with right hand carry only. So keep that in mind. If you're a lefty like me out there, uh, I've never had an issue carrying these. I just put them in my back left. Uh, you can carry it in your front left pocket if you want. Um, I tend not to do that with flipper only righty knives or flipper righty knives, but uh, it depends. So yeah, the devil's hand, I think, or devil's finger is the one coming out with the reversible clip. So keep your eye out for that. I certainly will be. A uh, big shout out to Spencer over at Finch Knife Co. Really appreciate everything you've done for my channel um providing knives for giveaway he's provided at least three knives for giveaway at this point he's donated knives to me to review and he's given me discounts on knives i bought to review uh, just a fantastic dude in the community as well uh, so i hope you guys support them uh their instagram will be linked below as well so uh that is a look at the finch's nest i think i've ranted and raved enough I really appreciate you guys watching. I love you all, and I hope you have a fantastic day. I will catch you later.